All right, so what we're gonna do then is ketchup, hopefully. Uh, no, not having burgers, because I like a little relish with my ketchup in that case. But we'll try to catch up on this little local phone database application. Local database phone application, how's that for a tongue twister? So I'm gonna use C Sharp, of course, go into store apps. Now for this, for now anyway, because I want to use Microsoft SQL Server CE Compact Edition, I have to go to the Windows Phone, Universal doesn't support it, so even selecting the, uh, uh, the ones that just say phone up here will not do the trick. I have to come down to where it says Phone Silverlight, and I can start with a blank one, that will be just fine. I will not <laughs> give it the same name as I did yesterday when I messed things up using my class name that I planned and had in all my code ready. So I'll call it, this is lab three, right? Lab three, local CE, I don't know, compact edition of SQL, make sense? So this, is the stuff you did, you did this is just what I did yesterday, I'm just gonna do it over again real quick. Oh, so, so if we have a company, you, can use you can use it. Okay, All right, so I'll just do it for eight, that way it's good for both eight and 8.1. And tickety boo, tickety boo, tickety boo. I, I have this theme song from Psych. Have you ever seen that show? Yeah, it's just running through my head all the time. I know. Sorry. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it won't mean much to you. But it's a silly show, but it's fun. There's a plug, right? I'll have to submit an invoice, ask them to pay me for advertising their show. All right, so we have a very basic little blank phone app, which gives us a main page XAML and a app XAML, right? And remember, as we talked about in our PowerPoint, rather than getting into the whole model view, view model, design pattern, we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna use the global accessible nature of the app object itself in order to harmonize all of our pages, because we're gonna eventually gonna have more than one and be able to always be talking to our database, right? Now we need models because we're doing a code first design essentially here. So I will right click and we'll add a models folder, a new folder. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a couple classes in here for my entities. Again, as I said yesterday, I'm just gonna do the good old familiar department employee. Quite simple though, I just have in the department the primary key and the name of the department. I'll add a class here for that. So the first one, well, it doesn't matter the order at this stage, but I can do department. And while I'm here, I'll add the class for employee. Okay, so what goes into these classes is basically a whole bunch of annotated uh, stuff in a regular class, just it inherits, um, well actually implements I should say, a couple of uh, interfaces that give it persistence <coughs> awareness, right? So we can notify automatically the data contacts that it lives within that uh, a property has been changed, right? So let me just grab the department class first of all. I think I went too far. I always get in trouble copying and pasting, as you've seen. So I'll just replace that with a uh, public partial class for department, right? Obviously some usings here that I need. So control period, my best friend. Of course, now I know more about refactoring. I'll learn to use that one even better as well. Okay, and system component model. Okay. So sorry, I kind of went too fast there. That first one was the link data, sorry, system data link mapping, right? It's the mapping capability uh, that I needed in order to map this class to an actual table in the database. Remember, link to SQL is much less sophisticated than entity framework. We can't do all the complicated mapping one entity to multiple tables or vice versa. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence, correspondence, but it is still a mapping. So that's why we need the mapping namespace. So we can utilize that. These two uh, property change, property changing again, that's just for the awareness of all of the, uh, 
events for whenever we're changing a property. And as we did talk about, we have this whole region here with the I notify property change members. Those are delegates that look after it. They simplify the writing the code in our setters because we just call these delegates fr repeatedly from any property when we're going to set a new value to a property, right? Uh, by the way, I, I'll always get warnings about this, it seems. Uh, what this is a timestamp, right? I'm only adding that not because I'm actually worried about concurrency, just to quickly mention or explain again. Uh, I don't care about concurrency issues because this is a local app running on a phone. There's no way I'm going to have two users in it at the same time, I don't think, right? But adding the uh, timestamp means that the default behavior of compare all values for optimistic concurrency is bypassed and it uses the more efficient timestamp approach. Mind you, <laughs> I suppose in the department table with only <laughs> one actual field other than the primary key, it really isn't saving very much, but I usually just do it in most classes. Okay, now I need a couple more usings. System data link, right? Because what we have here is we have a very simple primary key. That's what's shown here, first of all. Right? It's our department ID. It's really just an integer. It's straightforward getter setter. Nothing special going inside the setter here uh, because we don't change this. It's only generated by the database. So we can see we can pass a DB type to get very specific to SQL Server and say, I want you to make it this way. And we're familiar with this terminology from our previous database work. And is DB generated? True. Is primary key? True. And autosync just means that when, after we insert it, this object will automatically synchronize and get the new ID that was generated. So it knows it won't have an identity crisis, right? It knows who it is. It won't be going around wailing and shaking its head saying, who am I? I don't know my ID. And we have the name, right? So it's just a column, DB type, and varchar. That works good. Big enough for what we have to do. And uh, here, though, we're seeing inside the setter, we're calling those delegates, right? The uh, notify property changing and changed and that's what gives this persistence awareness so that it or it's part of the persistence awareness so it can automatically update the database as soon as we change the value of the property then the more tricky part okay more interesting in some ways as well i suppose is this whole business of the parent object being able to contain right a collection of the related child objects in this one-to-many relationship okay so Following the approach of our normal properties, we have a internal private variable. Okay, and the variable just happens to be of type employee. We just put it in uh, this entity set uh, container so that it knows that it's part of the link framework. And then the association is used to decorate the actual property, the, the public property for this collection of employees that belong in the department. Right? couple things here. The association, we specify the storage. Well, that's referring to the name of my private variable that holds it inside, right? So I could technically use a different name here if I wanted to, right? And then it also makes note of the primary and foreign key in the referential integrity relationship, right? So in this class, it's department ID is the primary key, maps to the foreign key inside my employee table, and I'm going to call it for consistency, Fred. No, no, actually I'll call it employee department ID, right? Uh, nothing magical about that name, it's just the name I'm going to use. It kind of made sense to me, it's the name of the class and then the fact that I'm sticking department ID in there, right? So that's really all there is to this other than our fancy little notify stuff, but this is boilerplate now, right? Any one of these classes, you're going to have the exact same code down in here just to handle all that property notification stuff. Okay, so let's go back to the employee. What are we going to put in here? Oh, it's so exciting to go through this quickly, isn't it? You're supposed to all show. Yes, yes, for the microphone. Come on. Yes. Oh, I don't think that even registered on the audio. Okay, this one's a little bit longer because I have more properties. Those little life forms, those little life. Okay, so again, we need to add a few usings. Might as well start at the top. Control period. System data link mapping. Property changes. 